Thank you for joining us for the 7th Annual John Paul Jones Jubilee and Auction by Portsmouth Historical Society. We're happy to have you here. My name is Lynn Joyce, I'm co-chair, and I'm here with Don Mahoshin, my fellow co-chair. Don's going to introduce our sponsors. Thank you. I'd like to uh, uh, thank our sponsors, Ashton & Company, PA, Lynn Joyce, Tate & Foss, Southersby International Realty. Westerly Portsmouth, Southport Printing, Seapost Flash, and last but not least, Ken Goldman. We're super excited and we're having an online auction to help out our local artists in the area. Absolutely. It's a win-win for Portsmouth Historical Society and for the local art community for sure. So we have a great lineup for you this evening. Several members of the organization and our community sharing their stories about some of the great programs we have going on here and um, the most exciting of which in my opinion is the Threads Community Quilt. So that's to come later on in the program um, but in the meantime I think we should get into the goodie bag. So let's see what we have in store for us at this year's Gala Good Bag. Ooh, we have some Port City pretzels. I have Tasty Ranch Dill. What do you have? Oh, I think I have, uh, oh, cinnamon sugar. Ooh. If you have any savings, please go to the local grocery store, uh, community store. You'll be able to find these pretzels for sure. What else do you have in there, Don? <clears throat> oh, we have this lovely sangria mixture. And we'll be mixing up a uh, sangria shortly but we want to see what else is in the bag here. Ooh. We have one more item from, I've heard a lot about this company, Naughty Good Bites. Um, hopefully your children are in bed right now. Um, so we will be uh, getting into this, perhaps while we're having our uh, lovely sangria. So, um, Lynn, what, what uh, flavor of wine did you want to pick for our sangria? I'll start red. Sure, sounds great. All right, let's uh, okay. do a glass right there. All right, it says to make the perfect cocktail, two plus parts of wine, one part mixer. An optional one part spirits. We're gonna <laughs> skip the spirits. <laughs> you know, Lynn, it's amazing that uh, here we are in 2020 about 100 years ago, we were in a pandemic, and here we are in the pandemic again. So, uh, therefore, you know, we're having our uh, online auction this year, um, online, and <laughs> I didn't make it out over there, but, and uh, we are going to be mixing up a few cocktails, get the night started. Speaking of spirits, 
I understand that people who are going through a pandemic right now say that the arts and culture actually lifts people's spirits up. Look at this room around you. It's bright. There are these lovely quilts on the walls. It just feels nice and light. But also, let's cheer to yes. our 2020 gala. Oh wow, that's nice. Wow. Wood stove kitchen. Wood stove kitchen's in really, really, really delicious. You know, Lynn, a hundred years from now, future generations will see how vested we are in preserving arts, history, and culture, and why it's so important to the society and to the New Hampshire Sea Coast. Yes, I have. Hmm. Actually, it is. So, um, we would like to uh, close our little cocktail hour by again thanking our sponsors and uh, letting people know that the bidding is going to be open uh, as soon as we close out our little introduction. And the most important part about what we are doing for this year's auction is highlighting all the beautiful artists that we have on the New Hampshire Sea Coast. And most of our artists, again, are uh, having a bit trepidation in um, selling their art to the community and to the visitors. And we are ecstatic that we're doing a 50-50 online auction. And Lynn is holding one of the pieces from uh, one of our artists and we hope if you see right below here that you will find the link kind of a VIP link uh, for the auction to be opening and again we would like to uh, welcome the remarks from uh, elect president Martha Philip Clark of the Portsmouth Historical Society and Lynn would you like to say anything? Yeah, I just want to, as we bid you adieu, I just want to remind you all to sit back, relax, enjoy your snacks, enjoy your cocktails, and remember to bid high and bid often because it's for a really fantastic cause. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Welcome, I'm Martha Fuller Clark, the incoming chair of the Portsmouth Historical Society. I am delighted to welcome you to this evening's event. I want you to know especially how proud I am to have been a board member of the society since we repurposed the organization beginning in 2008 by expanding into the old Portsmouth Public Library building in order to promote the arts history and culture of Portsmouth and the surrounding area. 
Over the past several years, much has been accomplished, including major physical improvements to the library building, a new HVAC system, greatly improved gallery and meeting space, the addition of an outstanding gift shop that highlights the work of local artists and artisans and authors. And now just this past winter and spring, the installation of new restrooms and catering facilities. Improvements to the John Paul Jones House and its gardens should also be noted. Even more exciting has been the successful launching of several major exhibitions showcasing nationally recognized artists from the area, including Edmund Tarbell and Gertrude Fisk that received national attention and recognition. This year, in response to COVID-19, the Society chose to draw on its own collection and that of several gifted contemporary quilters to launch the Threads exhibition. If you haven't seen it, do drop by. It is open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of every week up until the end of October. One of the more exciting aspects of this exhibition is how our residents, their families, as well as local businesses have participated by submitting quilt squares inspired by our scenic seacoast, our historic buildings, and our favorite restaurants and sites. You will learn more and see the amazing results later this evening. However, none of this could have happened without the support of our city, our generous contributors, including local businesses and corporations, and our growing number of members. If you haven't become a member, please do so this evening. Tonight, I urge you to bid generously on the more than 100 outstanding paintings from local and regional artists in our auction. The auction will be open from this evening through October 7th. Do encourage your friends to participate as well. Remember, anyone can bid around the country from the comfort of their own home. Your support is needed more than ever amidst the COVID epidemic, which has threatened arts and culture and museums throughout the country. We need you in order to ensure that the society can continue its important work in highlighting the arts and culture of the area, as well as maintaining and improving the Portsmouth Discover Center with its exceptional gallery space and the historic John Paul Jones House and Gardens. Again, thank you so much for joining us and I look forward to your active participation and generosity. Thank you. Hello. I'm Brian LeMay. I'm the director of the Portsmouth Historical Society. And I'd like to tell you a little bit something about the organization in general, about what it is we do here, and what possible difference it would make to you and to the people of the city. And, oh, the most important thing is to show you, for the first time ever, the community quilt that we put together from contributions from people around the city. So first, let me say something just about how the organization came to be. Uh, it started out as uh, one of the many organizations in town that ran a historic site, uh, a historic house called the John Paul Jones House, located here right across the street from the Discover Portsmouth Center. Uh, an old building built in 1758 by a sea captain who whose house at one point, we're pretty certain, uh, was the home of, or at least the temporary lodgings of another sea captain, John Paul Jones, uh, widely known as the father of the U.S. Navy. It's an important place too, because unlike the other historic houses in Portsmouth, it had a larger mission to encompass the entire history of the city. And it also, uh, is emblematic of the way that history worked in, in Portsmouth. Uh, the 
almost mythic status of its namesake, John Paul Jones, is very vague, as is John Paul Jones himself. And the way that it became associated with the history of Portsmouth says something about the way that history works in the city. In uh, the early, well, about a dozen years ago, the historic organization, which had been assembling valuable things over the years, made a major step forward in acquiring the old public library of, of Portsmouth. And it moved into uh, a complex that consisted of historic buildings and at one modern structure, two buildings that were built in the early 19th century, the Morton Benedict House and the Portsmouth Academy uh, building, were uh, used for many, many years from the 1960s on as the main Portsmouth Public Library. A, a modern structure was built to connect the two, which today accommodates the Discover Portsmouth Welcome Center. Today, we use the Morton Benedict House for offices, the Portsmouth Academy uh, building as our main gallery space, and the connecting building as the center of a welcome center that we use in cooperation with the Chamber of Commerce to welcome visitors from all around the world to uh, Portsmouth. The main attraction for what it is that uh, the Historical Society does, though, is its exhibitions, its walking tours, and its school programs. For many years, we've taken uh, our collections and our educators into the third grades, uh, each of the third grade classes of all the Portsmouth Elementary Schools. For many years, we've also taken visitors and locals around the city on walking tours of historic sites. And at least in the last dozen years, we've taken people around the world and into the deep culture of uh, Portsmouth and the larger artistic community of which it's a part. So let's put on our masks and walk into the Portsmouth Academy uh, galleries to take a look at what's currently on view here. It's a great old building, served many years as the public library, and now it's 6,000 square feet of great exhibition space, which is managed by the, the Historical Society's resident uh, exhibition manager, uh, Meredith Affleck, who just happens to be here, and she's gonna stand over on that side of the room, I'll stand here, and I think it's time for us to take off our masks. Meredith? You and Jerry Ward, the curator, did a great job in putting together this wonderful show. Originally, we had hoped to install an exhibition of American Impressionist art here this summer, which for various reasons has had to be postponed until next year. So we've reached deep into the collections of the Historical Society and into the community to pull together an exhibition that has been a surprising success. Tell us how it was put together. Well, we had a bit of a challenge when we decided that we really couldn't go ahead with the Impressionist exhibition um, until next year. And we were thinking about what we could do with the permanent collection, objects that we had on hand, and what we could do that would be meaningful during this really difficult period. And sort of as a group, in one of the staff meetings, we came up with this idea to get out the quilts and the bed coverings in the collection, which don't often get to see the light of day, and also have a community quilt built by uh, individuals in the community who wanted to submit 
a single square that we would then assemble into uh, something that would be a commemoration of this time period, but also a celebration of Portsmouth, the seacoast in New Hampshire. And it really was uh, an amazing success. One of the things that sort of got to me during the shutdown was that, you know, I was just sort of doing my own thing, going through the work, but when I had the opportunity to talk to somebody who was participating in the community quilt, they were all so enthusiastic about this project and were so happy that they could do something that was meaningful for the community during this time, that it really made me feel better about the whole situation, that we were doing something to make a difference in the community during this time. And setting up this show was uh, a, a lot of hard work, but it really came out well, despite the challenges that we faced. And we're lucky enough to have people around the community and objects in the permanent collection that really span a broad portion of the American story. So we'll see the community quilt just a little bit later. And before we leave this particular part of the gallery, are there any pieces here that you think are particularly noteworthy? I think behind me is one of these showstoppers lent by uh, filmmaker Ken Burns, who is an avid quilt collector. Uh, this beautiful quilt is called the Centennial Quilt, dates more or less from the Centennial of the United States in 1876, and is just a masterpiece of craftsmanship. It's just a beautiful thing to behold. And we're very lucky that he allowed us to borrow this quilt for the show, as he's got another project coming up in the not too distant future where most of his collection happens to be. So we are indeed fortunate to have that illustrious uh, New Hampshire resident represented here. Let's go into another gallery and look at some of the other pieces. But as we go there, let's consider that quilt making has changed in its perception as a work, as a, an art form in the last 25 years or so. And a lot of these major wall size compositions are strikingly like the art that was created in mid-century, uh, mid-20th century, and is now collected in all the major art museums of the world. This quilt was made in 1848 by the ladies of the Rye Congregational Church. Uh, it was made for their pastor at the time, and each square was made by a different woman who signed it or wrote a little message in one of the lighter colored squares, which is really quite lovely. Um, it's a classic album style quilt where you've got several different styles of quilt squares in it, making it a great uh, project piece that all the women worked on together to assemble into one large, large quilt. Meredith, I love this quilt. It is gorgeous. This is one of those pieces that uh, lends a lot to the modern aesthetic that we were talking about before. It's uh, very abstract and the contrast and the colors is just really uh, eye grabbing. It's just such a beautiful quilt. Um, it is one of two, maybe three in this show made by the same woman. We not positive on the third one, but we're highly suspicious since a lot of the same silks appear in all three of these quilts. Uh, Anne Pierce Drown Ham, who died in 1908, so these probably date from the late 19th century. Uh, and there are great things to look at up close, and there are great things to look at from across the room as well. In addition to beautiful pieces in the collection, we have some historically important ones too. Even though I suspect that most people will walk right by this one without appreciating the subtle, beautiful qualities of it. Tell us more about it, Meredith. Well, one of the things that you have to remember is that in the late uh, 18th century when this was made, the, the aesthetic was uh, of Greek revival, so very much a stark sort of aesthetic, very much more focused on structure uh, and style rather than color and flash. Um, and cotton was the luxury good to have at that time. It was the finest, the most expensive uh, bed covering you could have in your house. And this coverlet was in the Brewster Tavern and is on the bed, was on the bed supposedly, that George Washington himself slept on during his visit to Portsmouth in 1789.
Okay, so we've moved up here into the programs room of the Historical Society. We've left the old quilts behind and we're in a gallery now where we have some brand new contemporary quilts which are really extraordinary. You have to come and take a look at them. But the reason that we're here is the main attraction. This is the whole reason why you've gathered here tonight and what we're about to do is to show you the community quilts. The community quilts are an inspiration that we had after we had to, as I mentioned earlier, postpone our planned exhibition for this year, which was to be of Impressionist uh, art and some uh, contemporary woodcuts. And we began thinking about what it is that we could do instead of an old master exhibition. We rummaged through our closets of our collections and uh, in addition to coming across the quilts, we came up with an idea that was, had to do with what was really meaningful to us, what the historical society means to the community and what it is in the community that really means something to everybody here. And what did we decide to do, Meredith? We decided to solicit quilt squares from everyone all over the greater sea coast uh, to assemble a community quilt. Um, so somewhat ironically, given that we all had to be sheltering in place when we started this project, but it was a, a way that we thought we could invite everybody to think about what really was important to them in their community. And the response that we got was unbelievable. We had so many people submit so many different and varied squares of different places and things in the region, as well as different techniques and every color of the rainbow. And in fact, in addition to just one quilt that we had planned to make, we received so many contributions that we actually fabricated two quilts and we're just about to show you those now. Okay, so before we touch uh, uh, pieces that are going to be officially accessioned into the Historical Society's collections, we have to put on our official museum gloves, if we can, because we don't want to get fingerprints or hand oils on any of our official collections. And, uh, okay, are you ready, Meredith? Okay, first one. Okay, got it? Wow, look at these. They're all different. They're made by completely different people, completely different styles, completely different media. Well, not completely different, but a real variety of different subject matters here. Uh, and we have some animals, we have some houses, but why don't you point out some of your favorites, Meredith? Um, well, I do like the giant ant one because not being a Portsmouth native, I didn't know about the giant ant. So I got to learn a little bit about the uh, recent past of Portsmouth with the giant ant, um, which is just a t-shirt that somebody submitted a, the front square of, which I but thought- But it was a piece of sculpture, wasn't it? The giant ant was a piece of sculpture that was down in Market Square and apparently it was huge and red and very controversial. I see, okay. And here's a, a lighthouse, which has a, a heartwarming inscription on it. It says, protection, guidance, and hope. Words to live by. And lots of other edifices here in the, the Portsmouth area. This is the uh, Portsmouth Women's City Club. It's lovely. We have, this one is for the music scene. We've also got down here, we've got some house portraits. We've got the Moffat Lad House and Gardens the Strawberry Bank Community Garden. Oh, right, okay, and here's an old house here with smoke the, coming out of the chimney. The John Sewell House. Um, this square is for the Wentworth Coolidge Mansions Gardens with the uh, state flower, which is the purple lilac. Sailboat, a nice doggy on the beach. And this is my favorite, <laughs> which kind of sums up the entire Portsmouth area with a, uh, a, a compass rose and the official Portsmouth Historical Society colors. Well, we had to make sure. You have to come and take a look at that. That one made it in. That's one of the best. A nice scene of the entire town in the night sky. Fishes over there. The fishes are actually uh, stuffed work, like the Lafayette quilt we have downstairs. These have been stuffed so that they're three-dimensional. And I they're, think just, they're so They're adorable. quilted, they're quilted fish. They're quilted and then filled, so the little fish are puffy themselves. I see. And um, let's see what else. This square is to represent the super pink moon that we had super a few pink months moon. ago. Oh yeah, state map. Okay, let's take a look at the 
Yes. Second quilt. Just fold this one down like so. Fold like that. Okay. Ta-da! Here it is. Here are some extraordinary quilt squares, including North Church, the iconic North Church. And there's a story behind this one, isn't there, Meredith? Showstopper North Church Square was submitted by a woman who's actually a Massachusetts native, but found out about this project and wanted to uh, send in a square because Portsmouth is one of her favorite places to visit in the summertime. And she always talks about it um, in the paragraph that she submitted with her square. She mentions that her Portsmouth adventures always begin with seeing the spire of the church as she comes into town. Yes, each of these squares is accompanied by uh, uh, the story behind it, uh, a brief uh, narrative written by the creators of each of these squares that tells what the significance is it of each of these squares to their creators. And we'll permit you to take a look at squares and the narratives if you come and visit us. One of the best parts of doing this project was seeing all the different things that inspired people to create a square. Um, the Portsmouth Public Library, Strawberry Bank. Um, this maker decided to take up quilting again after not having done it for 20 something years. So it, it was a, a way to have people work together on a project while being socially distant. Um. So we've got the uh, Garden Harvest Festival at Strawberry Bank, Little Harbor School, um, just a wonderful variety of, of squares that were sent in. Lots of people talking about how they love the out of doors and uh, being outside in New Hampshire in the summertime. I mean, it was just a wonderful inspiration to get out and about in the community, even at a time like this. So come and see all these squares. Come and read about all about them. It'll be on view from, well, from tonight to tomorrow until December. Uh, no, I think it's November 9th. November 9th. Um, and then they'll, we may have them upstairs while the gingerbread show is going on. Okay. That's your community quote at the Portsmouth Historical Society. Um, this wouldn't have been possible without some really fantastic volunteers that we had. Um, and I want to make sure I get all their names right. Um, but honestly, the volunteers who offered to help us assemble this quilt had the idea of how to uh, organize it with the sashing, helped us with the tying of the quilt from front to back, um, and made sure that every single square found a good spot on the quilt and was displayed to its fullest potential. And it really wouldn't have been possible without them. Um, Brenda Scalaro, Chance Allen, Roberta Lippemeyer, Deb Colhays, Karen Traversi, Eleanor Nevins, the Seacoast Sewing Center and Portsmouth Fabric Company, a huge thank you to you because it just wouldn't have come together, especially in this short amount of time, without all your wonderful help. Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed that overview of the quilt exhibition offered by Meredith and Brian and some terrific background on our institution. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our next speakers. Uh, these two, I'm sure, are very familiar to you. They are young, they are fun, they are hip, they are influencers in the community uh, and have been the inspiration to many people looking to um, be their best selves as they move forward in life and find their niche. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Rhea Al-Hashmi of Rhea on Assignment and Miles Woodworth of Seacoast Flash. Uh, and uh, I, they're here to tell us a little bit more about the influence of arts, history, and culture in our greater Portsmouth and Seacoast community. So enjoy. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Hi there, welcome. Thank you so much to the Portsmouth Historical Society for letting us speak tonight. My name is Miles Woodworth. I am a brand videographer and content creator located right here on the Seacoast. And I'm Raya Al-Hashmi. My company is called Raya on Assignment, and I also work with brands. I'm a photographer, and Miles and I together, we go into companies and we help them with their visual content. And tonight we are going to be talking about the value of art in the community, specifically Portsmouth, because Portsmouth gets it. Yes, both of us have started and grown our companies right here in Portsmouth. We have um, both gone away to college. We've come back and we have really been nurtured and encouraged and supported in 
unbelievable ways in this community as artists, as creators. Um, and I, I don't know that we would have found that anywhere. Portsmouth is incredibly special in its ability to um, not only recognize talent, but also be able to support it. It was actually right here in the Portsmouth Historical Society that I was um, really brought in from the very beginning of my company to not only support them with their visual branding, but it was also connected with a lot of people in the community to help grow my business. Without this society, I don't know I would be um, where I am today, to be completely honest. A little backstory on myself. I went to the University of the Arts in Philadelphia, and I just remember being surrounded by other creators and artists and just being so overwhelmed and excited at the same time. Then comes graduation, and I stayed an extra year in Philadelphia trying to figure out what I wanted to do and how I was going to get a job in, in the film industry and nobody, nobody was hiring, nobody gave me a shot. A lot of my friends moved out to California and they were just working on huge sets and they weren't really loving it. And I just remember getting a hunch that I wanted to move back home, I wanted to figure out something back in the community that I grew up in. And I ended up finding myself being a dishwasher. I ended up working in a restaurant. I was a dishwasher, I was a prep cook, I didn't know what I was doing. I was having the worst time of my entire life and I remember getting a call one morning and they said don't bother coming in, the restaurant's closing down. And I was like mind blown, I was like this is it, this is my chance to start my own business. So I did, that was seven years ago, I started Seco's Flash and I started working with businesses in the area and I just remember this community actually giving me a shot, giving me the opportunity to work with them. And I remember going to events and networking mixers and business after hours and just mingling with the people in the community and just falling in love with it and realizing this is where I belong. And this community actually gave me a shot in the opportunity to start my own business. Yeah, absolutely. And a backstory about me, I was born in Portland, Oregon, I then moved to the Middle East, and then I lived in England, and then I moved to the Seacoast. Um, so I grew up mostly here with a bunch of traveling growing up, and I went to the University of New Hampshire, I studied journalism there, and it was really there that I started to connect my love for photography in a very practical sense and see how it can be used in the world. Um, but like Miles, I finished college and there wasn't a huge, you know, need for photographers, specifically in the newsroom, the budgets were getting cut, they were laying off people. So I found myself working in hospitality or working at a gym, um, making very little money and was just, um, you know, kind of again at that, at that crossroads of, okay, I'm either going to continue to work for someone else, not utilizing our innate talents, our zones of genius. Um, or I'm gonna take the risk, I'm gonna go all in, and I'm gonna see if I can um, take this beautiful craft that we both have that is so valuable to communicate um, specifically with businesses. And so I did, I jumped in, and this was about four and a half years ago, and it's been incredible, but I, I really do credit this community to a lot of the success I, I've been able to achieve, and same with you, Miles. We both have been given an incredible chance here. We have been encouraged, promoted, um, really been able to connect with lots of people that can help kind of plug us in. There is so much opportunity on the Seacoast. It's this beautiful um, sort of mix of small town connection mm -hmm. and ability to really grow uh, and meet the right people, but also this um, really city vibe where there's so many startups and opportunity to to do the work we do. Um, so Portsmouth is incredibly special to us in the, the fact that we've been able to grow our businesses and our lives here. And it's just amazing to see the growth in my business and the growth in the community, and we're growing at the same time, which is awesome. Yeah, I think specifically because we work with companies and brands here on the Seacoast predominantly, we are able to see how our work is, um, 
a real big key in helping businesses open up second locations, mm -hmm. hire new employees, mm -hmm. um, just expand their product line or, or be able to offer more services to more people. The impact that I think we're making as a community is really being felt around the world. Um, and I think specifically video and and photos can help really illustrate and educate people on what the businesses are doing here. A lot of the business is from referrals. Like everyone in the community is talking to each other and helping each other out and saying, who can do this, who can do that? And that's what I love about the community too, is like, it's small, but it's big. There's a ton of collaboration over competition. And I think that's what makes Portsmouth very specifically unique in that way. Um, I, I just felt it from the very beginning, the, the fact that people just wanted to collaborate and didn't feel that sense of scarcity or that there wasn't enough work for one another. So we'll collaborate often with other photographers and videographers um, because of how we have niched in as well, working with brands, we exclusively do that work. So any, any sort of other work that goes outside of that, mm -hmm. we're able to then partner with other content creators and hand them that work and we're all able to grow, but within our specialties, within our niches, Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about that, I think, on our podcast, Behind the Assignment, where we we really help um, inspire other young creative entrepreneurs to take their passion and turn it into profit. And a big part of that is niching in, recognizing our own innate talents and our own zones of genius and leaning into that, um, trusting that we are all here with very, very specific roles. Um, in this world, I believe. And when we lean into that, that's where uh, abundance meets us. That's where happiness is able to really get cultivated. And it's funny because I never believed in that until I became a part of this community that I was, someone introduced me to collaboration over competition. And it completely changed my whole outlook on mm -hmm. me, my business, my friendship, everything. And it's just such a beautiful thing. And it's like, why, why competition? Just collaborate. And that's what this community is so good at. And I think especially in the time we're in, you have, we've all been a witness to how we have come together. We've collaborated. We've taken our own unique strengths and our own zones of genius and are able to come together and, and really survive and perhaps even thrive in this time. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we're seeing a lot of transition and change and the need to evolve. But um, I think a lot, of, a lot of amazing good has come out of this and forced us to lean on each other and recognize that we are not alone. We've never been, but I think when we're, when we're challenged in this time, we recognize the, the string that attaches us all. And when we met, I kind of helped share with you that, hey, we all, there's enough for everyone. Mm -hmm. And especially as creatives, like I never bought into the starving artist mentality and I know everyone who's watching tonight that. right doesn't believe in that we understand that as creatives as artists um, we can thrive we can have an, a, an abundant life um, and it's really shifting that mindset away from um, not being able to make it as an artist to to living our best lives and I mean I think it's it's truly because of our work as artists that we are able to live a life that feels incredibly fulfilling um, incredibly in alignment with who we are and um, the historical society I know they that's what they stand for with with their shows promoting artists so tonight we want to make sure we recognize and thank you all you are the reason why Portsmouth is the place it is you're the reason why we have so many tourists that come people who want to learn about the history who want to walk strawberry bank who want to see all the old homes that are still preserved and in beautiful condition um, so we need to make sure that we are recognizing you all. We see you even though we are, you know, can't be together during this time. We look forward to when we can again. Um, but you know, your why Miles decided to move back from Philadelphia and start his business here in Portsmouth. You're the reason why, even though I have no family in the area, I chose to stay here. Um, so please continue to show up, continue to support. Um, this is an incredibly special place we live. We could choose to live anywhere, right? Same with you. But we've all chosen to live here on the Seacoast for a reason. And the, the older I get, the more we travel, 
the more we always look forward to coming back home on our vacations because this this community supports artists um, they preserve history we we're always trying to do what's right and to move forward and recognize when we don't get it right um, so thank you from the bottom of our hearts and all the other artists who really are able to thrive in our community we are so thankful and um, you know anything you're able to contribute tonight is so meaningful to us and everyone thank you so much for supporting the arts and supporting creators we were there we needed the support we got the support and that's what i love about this community so thank you all so much all right welcome we are at the uh, part of the evening where we are going to be picking a ticket um, somebody's going to get this wonderful lot or case of these beautiful wines i hope you guys are excited and with us here is <laughs> Robin, sorry, and uh, Robin's going to let us know a little bit about what we have here for wines this evening. We are so excited to uh, hear a little bit about the wines that we have for that person who's going to be taking them home. Yep. So Robin. Okay, I'm just going to talk about a couple of the wines. This is a great case of wine. Whoever is the winner is going to really enjoy themselves. I'm going to talk about the Rumbauer for a couple minutes. That's a very famous wine family. This is a great Chardonnay chilled on a warm night delicious and i'm also going to mention the amaroni it's an italian red it's docg which is the highest designation in italy for wines it's uh very rich and full-bodied and you're going to love it we have a bunch of other wines from california and from france and it's a really great case of wine so Congratulations to the lucky winner. Now, um, Robin, I know we were talking a little earlier about uh, this particular bottle here, this Saldo. Yeah, so... Um, can you tell tell me a little bit more about it? Sure, well, the Saldo is um, from the Prisoner Wine Company, and it's um, a very elegant bottle of wine. And Saldo is, um, it can be in either Portuguese, Spanish, or French, and it yeah. meant... And Italian. Oh, and Italian, yeah. Yes. And it meant um, elegant wine or yes. something yeah. along yeah. those lines. And so we had to look it up because nobody knew what Saldo meant. <laughs> now we do. And also, I think we were talking a little bit uh, earlier about a, uh, the same company. Yes, um, The Prisoner. The Prisoner, right here. Right. Um, and I think Brian knows about the label. And it's a very famous painting, and um, it's a, actually a very famous wine. People love it. It's a cab from California, so uh, if you like cabs, you're really going to enjoy that one. I don't know the whole story about the painting, but maybe Dawn remembers something about that story. Uh, well, the the wine's called the Prisoner, and um, you know it is a. Uh... It's kind of a it's gory a, little picture, but... It's a picture, of course, of a painting. And, you know, here we are uh, with all of our lovely Seacoast painters, which I think, you know, is a uh, interesting um, aspect about uh, this particular wine. But, um, yeah, so I think it's time. without further ado, we should probably pick a ticket. And uh, do you want to hold... Sure. Hold that and move the tickets around, so... Here we go. So I'm picking five tickets, one ticket, 10 tickets. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and the winning ticket goes is... to number 256. I'm just kidding. Um, Sharon Parker, you are a winner and hopefully you're watching. And uh, in case you want her telephone number, we have it on file. Excellent, congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations to your case of wine. Hi everyone, my name is Judy Loto. I am the Director of Development for Portsmouth Historical Society. I wanted to echo everyone else and say thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, I also want to say congratulations to the winner of our wine raffle. I think that that person is, has a heck of a good party on their agenda coming up, so if I were you, I would figure out who it is and be sure to uh, make some new friends perhaps. We are super excited about what we've got going on next. Um, this event is just the kicking off point for our Bidding for Good auction that starts today and goes until October 7th. The address you can see displayed below on your screen. 
We have more than 100 works of art from Seacoast artists. Uh, they span all different price ranges and all different subject matters. Uh, they're really quite stunning. Uh, there's paintings, there's sculpture, there's three-dimensional art, there's jewelry. There's a little bit of something for everyone. Uh, not only does your bid support us, uh, but it also supports the individual artist who created the work of art. It was important for us to pay it forward this year, to really create something, an auction made for two, uh, and help support the artist's community. We couldn't do this uh, without the support of the arts community, and we need to remind people constantly that the artists who create the art of today, uh, that art becomes what fills the museums of tomorrow. So it's extra important to make sure that we are supporting those efforts, uh, and we're happy to do that. I also ask that when you log in to Bidding for Good, um, that you take a look at our Fund a Need portion of the Bidding for Good auction. Uh, the Fund a Need portion is us asking you for cash donations, um, and they range in value. Please give what you can, every little bit counts. Uh, but those donations will actually be compiled together, and we will use that money very specifically to commission a work of art from a local Seacoast artist, uh, something that we can, we can put on display here at Discover Portsmouth uh, in the Portsmouth Historical Society, uh, something that can bring pleasure to everyone who comes visit us. So again, please log in, bid high, bid frequently, enjoy. It's a perfect time of year to start thinking about your holiday gifts uh, and what better way to, uh, to support some local or artists and our wonderful organization in the meantime. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, a final shout out for our sponsors this evening, uh, Ashton and Company, PA. Uh, we have Lynn Joyce with Tate and Foss, Sotheby's International. We have Westerly Portsmouth, uh, Southport Printing, Seacoast Flash, and of course, Ken Goldman Photography, uh, who helped do all of these wonderful photographs of all of these amazing works of art that we now have in our auction. Um, and above all, I think that we owe uh, the staff, the volunteers, the board here at Portsmouth Historical Society, huge shout out, and in particular, the committee that helped make this possible. Uh, Don uh, Prohosian and Lynn Joyce were our co-chairs of the committee. Uh, Beth Jefferson and Joyce Tucker did yeoman's work helping to put the auction together. Uh, and there were so many others that helped uh, bring this to a reality at a time where it's a very different kind of event than we've had in the past. So we're grateful for everybody's efforts. Uh, we're grateful for your support. Uh, and again, uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. So bid high, bid frequently, come visit us, see what's going on next. And don't forget, pay attention uh, to all of our e-blasts and our social media posts, uh, because no matter what, uh, no matter what comes next, uh, one way or another, you can rest assured that we will have our gingerbread uh, house contest and event this uh, the end of the season. So we're excited about that too. Anyway, thanks so much and have a good night. Well, Lynn, what an event. It's we been had a great evening. We had uh, Martha Fuller Clark. We had uh, Ray Ann Miles from Seacoast Flash. And uh, we have this beautiful exhibit that's going on right now. Most importantly, um, all the artwork from all the local artists. It's amazing how they depict this beautiful area that we live in. The seacoast, the waves, the Isle Shoals, the Wentworth uh, Coolidge Mansion. Uh, it's pretty amazing. And the nice thing is, is that people from all over the country can actually buy the artwork. That's right, because it's on Bidding for Good, and anyone can um, choose to bid on any of these amazing works of art. So, I think in wrapping up this evening, we should probably uh, thank our sponsors again. So, uh, we want to thank Ashton and Company, PA. We want to thank you, Lynn Joyce, of Tate <laughs> Foss, Sotheby International Realty. That's a mouthful. Uh, Westerly Portsmouth. Southport Printing, Seacoast Flash, Miles, thank you very much. Ken Goldman, who actually photographed all the artwork for us for this auction. 
And also, we want to mention the Fund in Need this year, and we're looking for cash donations. The Fund in Need is actually going to fund a piece of artwork. We're going to highlight one of the local artists, and it's going to be stationed or here uh, at Discover Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a beautiful addition to this building. Yes. And uh, we're going to, again, wrap the evening up. Uh, please bid. Um, we are in desperate need of uh, donations, um, as well as the artists. So bid high, bid often, sit back, relax, um, and continue to enjoy all of these wonderful snacks and goodies that we um, made available to you in the goodie bags. And I'm going to dig into my naughty good fights right now. Cheers. And again, the link is at the bottom of the screen or the top of the screen, put it somewhere on the screen. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone. We really appreciate your support. Hi, my name is Heather Ashton. I am from Ashton and Company, and I am proud to be a sponsor of this year's John Paul Jones Jubilee. We hope you all have fun, bid high, and good luck.